Hi guys, Hengist here from House of Hengist Comics and a big welcome back, Beansters. Uh, hard cheese for the delays, sorry about that lads, but today what we are exploring wargaming, actions at beer here, Keen. And first let's get into the research. Um, I've done a lot on Beer Hakeem and I've posted a lot and here are a couple of slides which give you an overview so do freeze those rather than me regurgitate everything but it is all concerning the Battle of Gazala. It was a critical defence by the Free French Forces, their first real action since the fall of France and it became a sort of um, Verdun uh, legacy piece. There's some great videos on it, I really recommend you watch these. Um, so again, go back and check on that. Really, I also wanted to explore the French Foreign Legion and, of course, what we were going to do at Bia Hakim because it's not quite what everyone thinks. It isn't a fort as such. It's a series of trenches with gun pits and positions based on the, the location of an old Ottoman uh, fort. Now, I'm just going to be clear here and say that this isn't uh, the full episodes on this. These were testers, so when we come to do this for real, we will have a good idea and a good basis to to put these operations ahead importantly part of the battle of Bir Hakim isn't just the tanks and infantry assaults it's also about the breakout and we never had a chance to do that but i think basically what you get from this in, in terms of exploring it the research governs the game and Koenig was to put up an incredible defense here i mean the free french forces were magnificent in this battle You've got to understand they were at the end of the line, the Indian box to the north had been overrun, and really they weren't given an earthly by the British, and they held on for 11 or 12 days, and that caused major problems for Rommel, massively. There were a lot of foreign troops, Togo, Madagascar, Senegal, also there, often unrepresented, but let's bring them back into uh, attention as well, because they did a great job. Rommel was very thought, uh, thwarted. Koenig wasn't impressed when he met him. And we also found Susan Travers, who uh, was an incredible woman and also part of the free, uh, Foreign Legion, I think the only woman. So we made her up but never got an opportunity to use her. I think we will in the main series, especially on the breakout game when we do that. So exploring the French Foreign Legion and building them um, was really part and parcel of this. We had a lot of the other forces, all the Italians have been done, but I wanted to sort of get it right so it was representative really of what we can use the, the French Foreign Legion for because they, they fight for both Vichy and, and Free France. And here I start with the, the company. These are mainly Battlefront with some Peter Pig uh, head swaps as well with other troops. Um, including Peter Pig themselves but you know I pick up figures that I can use and and I do like the head swaps the drill out and the fill in sort of approach and you get a nice finish you know obviously some without hats as well um, you could do more with British standard helmets um, because a lot of photographs uh, represent that and obviously you know it, it depends on what exactly you're trying to replicate but I need these for other actions especially when I get over to Syria and places like that so I've tried to be quite general in what I've done what I was interested in was finding out about how many Bren carriers they had uh, around Bir Hakim and these were used in a number of actions and of course a number of portees which I haven't built yet but let's get straight into the first sort of action which I've entitled patrol so in this uh, small scenario, effectively, we have a French Foreign Legion patrol trying to effectively identify the force that's coming uh, against it uh, to take whatever steps are required to secure good intel that it can basically bring back to the fort. Uh, to do this, it must effectively maneuver to various laying up points, which effectively allow it then to give information on um, the force composition, direction, and so on of, of enemy forces. So it was comprised of a number of um, Bren carrier patrols out in the desert, as we can see here. And um, effectively, against them was a huge column with wings protected by armored vehicles and, of course, um, the motoclisti. Now, the Italians uh, have to observe the enemy and then react, so to speak. Uh, and unfortunately they made very good roles which put the French Foreign Legion at a huge disadvantage from the outset. 
That said, they managed to get up to two prominent laying up points, uh, but then were compelled to really effectively disgorge their, their infantry and try and force their way through the convoy to get back to Bir Hakim. This caused problems. The Portis effectively were knocked out pretty quickly and came under sustained fire. Um, even though more French uh, troops were arriving, there was a real problem here because they became congested and effectively the Motoclisti and AB-41s were managing to knock off the enemy vehicles. Here they, they effectively formed a very strong screen which is protecting all the light soft skins and uh, it was also preventing the Foreign Legion from puncturing through that line or the exit point to the left. But um, it, it was a big table, there was a lot going on and effectively there was a huge sort of series of gun battles that were raging across that front line as they were trying to, uh, to manoeuvre. The Italian motoclisti managed to hold their positions and um, although uh, the two lefty uh, armoured cars were destroyed, the Bren carriers um, carried on fighting with great vim, uh, losing uh, a, a few and getting damaged but the infantry that was within them managed to uh, dismount uh, as you can see here and operate quite effectively but uh, it wasn't until the arrival of a uh, lost Indian platoon that really their fortunes changed and it was through this and uh, a Sergeant Singh who led uh, this motorized infantry uh, in, in a brilliant series of counter thrusts causing maximum problems for the Italians. It was a fantastic game in terms of uh, a lot of smoke being used, um, a lot of uh, cautious movement, and um, it, it, it was played quite cleverly, uh, although a lot of damage, because when you're in the open and subject to air attack and uh, off-table artillery, you know, if these things get into play, it can be a, a nightmare. But uh, again, the Indians were very valiant, as were uh, the French Foreign Legion, and eventually, even though the carriers are taking sustained damage, um, they, they, they managed to push up forward under a smoke screen and effectively managed to uh, knock out uh, the motoclisti on, the, on that low ridge, uh, destroy a couple of vehicles, and make their own sort of exit point. Uh, at, Ultimately, they, they couldn't really do any damage to the, the convoys, but the convoys, there were about 30 trucks just moving continuously uh, across the board. Um, and, um, the, you know, they managed to get enough intel to suggest that they were facing a substantial force. There were some really interesting moments, some great gallantry as well, led by Singh. Very good use of the cards as well in play, uh, which saved the... Uh, the, the Allied forces on a number of occasions from being really uh, shot to pieces. But smoke is critical, and if you don't have enough smoke, especially in the open, as uh, infantry, you really are subject to the whims of the enemy, and you can't really move forward if you're under such sustained fire. But the smoke allowed them to do the things they needed to do, um, and, it, and, it, and effectively it was well played and well executed. But the damage was frightful on that patrol. It lost quite a lot of its equipment just as the Italian tanks turned up. So it could have been an absolute uh, debacle. Um, the trucks, they lost quite a few of their own trucks as well, but they were saved right at the end by the, uh, the good old RAF and Hurricanes, which was a big surprise to the Italians. So a good interesting game, we learn much. And can I just recommend Alamein if you haven't read that, guys. The next game was effectively called Point Blank, and this was really the tank assault by mistake, straight into that gun line. They started at eight inches, having stumbled into it. Koenig ordered his troops to effectively hold their position and not open fire until they were in, I think it was something like six to 800 yards. And they, they basically, uh, blew up a huge number of the uh, Italian tanks that had stumbled into this sector. So we recreated that with the same sort of start disposition and this was a brilliant game in terms of what it could have been. Um, everything went absolutely wrong as you can expect for the Italians. I mean the their first platoon was shredded, the uh, French went first, the second tank platoon just panicked. Uh, then the open ground, which is what they thought would be their open door, 
had a, 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 an ambush upon it with the 25 mil hotch kisses and ultimately um, within you know minutes the Italian tanks were had been blown to pieces but although this doesn't seem as though it was much entertainment there was a lot that could be learned from it there were moments of uh, reckless heroism how can I put it um, but effectively the Italians didn't quite really um, use any good tactics here I think we all learned uh, a lot from this game what you can and can't do but it was still very very interesting because the outcome obviously was pretty predictable and pretty much the same but there were moments where that outcome could have been different had maneuvers or a little bit more thought been put into uh, the tactics at that point uh, these things happen in these types of games and it's never particularly easy and why you do these testers. The key also using the cards very well um, and trying to reflect within those cards the history. So this was really entertaining. I mean, we've got the Italian tank clues uh, running. Uh, this is what actually happened. A lot of bailed out crews just panicked and ran. And I think they lost 18 tanks in seven minutes, which was about what happened historically. So it couldn't have been as you know, closer to the mark than I thought. But it could have been an entirely different game, I think. So ultimately, yeah, this was a good tester. And then we went into a, a German and Italian uh, assault onto an infantry part of the line. And this as well was very interesting. Uh, the Italians were a little bit more cautious than the Germans and smoke was used well. But again, those, those positions because on both wings there were minefields and you rolled randomly and of course the Italians arrived in the minefield right in front of machine guns got absolutely chewed up. Uh, French command was excellent, it didn't panic, it used its trenches very well um, and really in the end both the Germans and the Italians just couldn't make any headway. They tried everything but no one actually penetrated the trench line. And uh, there were many frightful Italian and German casualties. Uh, the Germans were a machine gun group. Bursa Gary were fighting uh, on foot. Again, here, stuck in a minefield, trying to get through the minefield over the wire against an enforced position. A nightmare. But again, once more, brilliant tester, great ideas. So I'd just like to wrap this up. We've got some ideas with what Craig has been building with this sandbox. We, we, we're moving to this for the desert. Um, and there's some great ideas about using sand to, to effectively contour your landscape, to use it for your desert. Uh, and I really hope that people um, look at this because this is what is used by the military today. They use a lot of sandbox modeling and it's really, really excellent. It gives that sort of authentic landscape feel and you can do a lot with it as Craig has demonstrated here. So well done to Craigie uh, or Rude Boy as we call him. So one last thing before I go. Uh, yeah, we're carrying on with Achtung Panzer. We've had a break. But please revisit Blitzkrieg because there's been so much in it. We've had just about everything. Starting with the crossing of the frontiers, the glider assaults on Eben Amal and down on those bridges, the uh, Dutch operations with uh, Seventh Flieger Corps, uh, that's been fantastic. Uh, actions in Belgium, uh, all based on the history, a huge mechanized mass, a monster moving through France and the battles that are taking place around these sort of uh, towns and farmsteads. It's been absolutely uh, great stuff, including cavalry, uh, Luxembourg, the, the fleeing of the Crown Prince, German logistics. And then, of course, lots of urban fighting, river crossings, panics, ghost recon. I don't know how much more we could have done, but we got it all from the history. And one thing that we've really, really enjoyed is how much we've learned really uh, by doing this series so far and we will continue to do so. Uh, I think we are in a unique position to be able to do it, it just takes a hell of a long time. And our last really big episodes were at Walhaven, uh, which was the air landing operation. But coming soon, Frank and Johnny's Wars, we see uh, some of those Highlanders thrown into action in a desperate action uh, around uh, uh, a Belgian village. 
And of course, let's not forget Beer Hakeem, which will come up uh, for real when we get there. So it's cheerio, Chumpsters. Best wishes and catch up with us soon.